Welcome back to another episode of Four Expedition Adventure. In this episode, we venture out to Bandelier National Monument to explore the stunning beauty of the ancient civilizations of Frijoles Canyon. Join us for history and culture of this priceless jewel of northern New Mexico. The next episode of Four Expedition Adventure starts now. Well, hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Four Expedition Adventure. My name is Scott Luthold. Today, we're coming to you from Bandelier National Monument, which is located in northern New Mexico. And more specifically, it's located upslope and on the western bank of the Rio Grande between Santa Fe and Los Alamos. And this is a very special place. Heather and I have driven past the signs for this on a number of occasions and really wanted to come out here, and we just hadn't done it. So we got in our Ram truck with our new Go Fast camper, and we came out here and we decided to camp here at the National Monument and spend the day doing some hiking. It's a really wonderful place. There's a lot of native dwellings here. The uh, visitor center is located in Frijoles Canyon, and in the bottom of the canyon is El Rito de los Frijoles, which stands for the Little Creek of Beans. And it's a beautiful little creek. It's very shaded with canopy trees with red pine and ponderosas and, and uh, scrub oaks and other beautiful vegetation. And what's really neat is that uh, this monument is big enough actually to go backpacking in. There are trails that take you all the way down the canyon to the Rio Grande, and then there are other trails that can take you all the way up to the high alpine forests of the Yamez mountain range, which is located upslope from here. It's just a really beautiful place. If you haven't been here, I highly recommend you come here. A lot of people come here bikepacking. And in fact, in our campground, there's a couple of people bikepacking and camping in the area. It's a wonderful way to, to experience the place. Now, the most important thing to point out is when you come here, it is required that you take a shuttle in. So there's a parking area outside the monument in the town of White Rock. You park there and you can take a shuttle in. Now, there are a few exceptions to that. If you have a dog in your car, if you're handicapped, uh, and there's a couple of other exceptions, you can actually drive down here and park at the lodge. And then you pay when you get into the, uh, the visitor center to be able to experience the rest of the park. Now, the way we are experiencing the park, we came in, we're camping at Juniper Campground. Juniper Campground is up on top of the canyon. We camped overnight up there. We only stayed for one night. We parked our vehicle at a trailhead. We hiked all the way down to the visitor's center, and then we can either take the shuttle back because there's a drop off right by our vehicle, or we can hike back out. You do have to pay nonetheless. We do have a national park pass, which qualifies for getting into this monument for free. However, you do have to pay to camp. We paid about 12 bucks. Very, very nice campgrounds, nice facilities, bathrooms, and uh, the campsites are really, really nice as well. So we're having a wonderful day here. We're gonna show you some of the beautiful uh, dwellings that you can find in the area. There's also an absolutely spectacular lodge that was built by the CCC back in the 1930s. I'll show you a little bit of that as well. And uh, we'll just enjoy this day together. We really hope you enjoy this episode. So sit back and enjoy the ride. We're currently hiking down along the El Rito de los Frijoles, which runs all the way down to the Rio Grande. We aren't gonna be able to go all the way down to the Rio Grande or the lower falls. There's an upper falls and lower falls, but because of a recent washout, the creek filled up with water and washed out a couple of the bridges and so forth. So we're only gonna be able to get down to the upper falls. So we're gonna do that. That's 1.5 miles from the trailhead here. So according to the 3D map that they have in the visitor center, at the very bottom of the canyon is the Rio Grande. And then the creek comes up this canyon we're in here where the visitor center is. And as you go further up the canyon, you end up passing by a lot of different cliff dwellings and so forth. And even further up the canyon, it shifts from high desert flora and fauna to more of an alpine flora and fauna, red pine, ponderosa pine, all the way up to a high peak. So this is really an incredible canyon that these Native Americans lived in that had pretty much the best of all worlds. Really amazing. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. And the further down into this canyon we get, the quieter it gets, the narrower it gets. I can only imagine what it would be like hiking all the way down to the Rio Grande. It would be very similar to hiking down through Havasupai all the way down to the uh, Colorado River in the Grand Canyon. 
similar type of experience with waterfalls and all of that. It's really beautiful. very steep wall right here on the trail. You can't really see even down the bottom without taking a few risks to look over the edge, but it drops way down there. You can hear some water down there. Interestingly enough, as we were hiking down this canyon, there was no water in the creek, but now all of a sudden we can hear water down in this canyon, pretty steep drop down in there but there's a good possibility we could have water in the falls well let's see what we can find here oh there's the falls wow it's a little trickle right now but very very beautiful <laughs> beautiful falls I'd love to be able to go down there at the bottom and just sit in that water I know Well, as you can see here, the trail ends. Not allowed to go any further. Looks like it's been quite a while since anybody walked it, but it's probably because the trail's washed out further down. So unfortunately, we can't go all the way down to the Rio Grande or see the second waterfall. And we can't get down and touch the water unless we go upstream and try to get down to the water somewhere up there. Water is life, isn't it? Cheers to that. <laughs> so prior to the CCC coming here and making improvements to the canyon to turn it into a national monument and building a lodge here, there was another lodge named Ten Elders. And Ten Elders was operated from around 1925 to 1976 by uh, Evelyn and George Frey. Now, it says in the documentation that Evelyn continued to live here her entire life. She and her son had a conversation. Her son said, Mom, never leave. It's the most beautiful place on earth. And that's exactly what she did. She stayed here until she was around 90 years old, working in the visitor's center at the monument. And when she finally passed on, she passed away in her own cabin right here in the canyon. So there's a couple of things I should probably point out. First of all, there is a lot of shade here. So there's a lot of uh, canopy cover. So if you come here in the summer months, it's a little warm. It's uh, probably going to be pretty tolerable because there's a lot of shade. The other thing is if you want to hike up and see some of the dwellings, you're gonna have to climb up tall ladders. And so if you're afraid of heights, it's probably something to avoid. You may be able to hike up and see it from the trail, but if you wanna get up into the dwellings you're gonna to have to climb those ladders. All right so we've arrived to our first ladder. I'm gonna start climbing up this and Heather will follow up behind. Awesome. Wow it's so breezy up here it's beautiful. A little ways up, we gotta keep going. Very cool, very, very cool.
All right, we've arrived at the next ladder. Look at this one. <laughs> this one goes up a ways. Another ladder, third ladder. that out. Wow. Got these little cave openings. Not many structures left, but there is one here. Looks like a well or a kiva. Super cool. So as you can see, as I mentioned earlier before, there's horizontal holes going across. Those were probably carved in and then a vega was put into that hole. A vega is a skinned log and there was probably some support beam out on the side over here which created a floor surface. So it's probably more than one floor or that acted as a roof. As you can see here's a vega and this being a kiva with a roof over the top of it the vegas go through the wall and they create support for the roof which was made of mud and hay and other branches going out in the opposite direction from the vegas. Those are called latias. So as we've been hiking along on this trail, we've run into this guy named Mark several times. And he's cruising around through the area. He's got a van and a, and a dirt bike. And he's finding all sorts of dirt bike single track. And so we came across him early this morning coming down off the mountain. And uh, we've run into him like five or six times. So shout out to you, Mark. Good to meet you. The last but not least, on this particular dwelling. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. These ladders are very, very sturdy, very, very well anchored. Nobody has to worry about these things coming loose. But you do have to be careful. So I'm happy to report that my back is doing better. Some of you who watch my videos know that I injured my back a number of weeks ago. And uh, we were up in Portland, I went to the emergency room, and then Heather, who's a complete superstar, drove us 21 hours straight home. I spent about a week laid up on the couch and didn't really do a whole lot. Then I ended up going to a place called, called Taos Whole Health. And that's where my primary is. They, they practice Eastern and Western medicine. And uh, there's a gal there named Christine. She's my primary. She, she super rocks. And uh, she reviewed my CT scan. And unbeknownst to me and the emergency room doctor that I saw, it uh, turns out that uh, my psoas muscle was severely injured. And that makes total sense because the psoas muscle goes from your spine around your hip and down through your groin and I have the most of my pain has been in my lower back around my side and my hip has been completely numb 
And then every once in a while when I bend over, I would feel numbness going down into my groin. So yeah, turns out it was my psoas muscle. I'm happy to report that things are doing better. I did get on some medicine and some protocols. And so this is our first adventure out since that accident. Uh, we did sleep in the rooftop tent last night and it wasn't the greatest to say the least, but um, we are out here and I'm happy to report we're out here. And tonight I just need to make some adjustments probably to make sure that my sleeping situation is a little more comfortable. But yeah, uh, thanks to all the people who've made comments on our videos and wishing me well. And uh, stay tuned for a lot more videos. I mean, this is really what it's like to have lived in a valley like this. Wow. I mean, you've got ladders coming up this cliff wall, and this is just a natural wind cave, and these were turned into residential spaces. I mean, there's what, one, two, three, there's like four or five spaces here. It's just so darn cool. Very sheltered. Right, honey? Could you live in here? I think it's pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even need a tent, you already got it. That's right. Can't be a small person to fit through there. I mean, it's probably just big enough to sleep. Really cool. about you, but I think it's time to take a nap. Oh, this might even be more comfortable than my rooftop tent. <laughs> Much higher up in the air, that's for sure. All right, so here we are at a, I don't know if this is original or if this is a reconstruction. My guess is that it's a reconstruction, but this gives you an idea of what these buildings looked like up against this mountain cliff. You can go inside there, stay on paved trail so you can't really go in there, but you can see that there's a, a skylight in there. It looks like the walls were some kind of a plaster. Very cool. Oh yeah, there you go. Air ventilation probably for a fireplace. You've got the Vegas and the Latias. And there's a back room in this one. Pretty dark back there. So this here is one of the main structures. It's a full circle village with a kiva in the middle of it. Really beautiful. So what do you think of Bandelier? I liked it. It wasn't what I was expecting. I was right. expecting it to be a little more deserty, but I liked the vegetation here, the creeks, and I like that we took the whole day to do it because it's not just an in and out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I would agree. I think um, in order to get the full experience, like we did, hiking down to the falls, yep. hiking up into um, the valley and climbing up into all the different dwellings, and then also experiencing the lodge and having lunch at the cafe, which I would was delicious. It was great. I mean, the food at the cafe in the lodge is really, really good. 
and I would definitely recommend that to people. So what we did is we camped here, we hiked down uh, Frey Trail from the campground down to the visitor center. We then hiked down to the waterfall uh, below the visitor center and then came back, had lunch in the cafe and then did the upper canyon. I think that was really a good way to do it. Now, if we had more energy and my, my back was in better shape and it wasn't high sun, we might hike back up the trail back to camp, but that requires us to hike up a canyon wall. So we're gonna go back to the visitor center and you can catch a shuttle every half hour and the shuttle on its way to uh, White Rock, the village of White Rock, where most people pick up the shuttle, it stops at the amphitheater by the campground. So we can get a free shuttle ride back. We're gonna do that. And then we're gonna make camp for another night here and take off tomorrow. All right, honey, how many miles did we go today? Almost 12. Nice. So by the time we fill this up, get to the shuttle station and get ready for our ride home, 12 maybe, miles. Maybe do a few jumping jacks? Yeah, I'll run around there. Come on, honey, you can get 12. That's you can get 12. Not bad for a bad back, actually. <laughs> not bad for a bad back. That's right. So every half an hour, you can catch a shuttle over here on, I think it's probably the south side of the parking lot. There's a wall here, a fence, and you get behind here, you sit on these benches here, and then the shuttle will come and pick you up. Ladies, here's how you wash hair. <laughs> <laughs> Heather's putting her head and face like she's bobbing for, for apples. apples. <laughs> Good night.
my friends, I think that's it for this episode of Four Expedition Adventure. I really hope you enjoyed this episode as much as Heather and I enjoyed creating it. If you haven't become a subscriber of Four Expedition, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button. Of course, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when videos go live. And if you consider yourself to be an adventurer and you're looking for an adventure community, consider joining me and Heather at Team 4X by going to 4expedition.com join to learn more. Until the next time, take care. Thank <laughs> you.